Hey, Chastity, thanks for your wonderful question on our Facebook page. There. Yep, thanks, Chastity. Great question, Chastity. So we're going to do our best to answer you, um, to the best of our knowledge, which let's put a qualifier on yeah. there. We might <laughs> yeah. be wrong. <laughs> we're funny, but not always. No, nah. we're going to do our best, but we don't know. So, um, no, we do know. We'll give you a shot. How is stimulus... To, for those of you that are not Chastity, that don't know our question, here you go. Here's what she asked. Uh, how is stimulus-stimulus pairing used for increasing vocal behavior? Right, that's one. How does it relate to the production of spontaneous vocalizations? That's two. Uh, and three, how is it related to vocal imitations? And four, what are the limitations of stimulus stimulus pairing? Chastity, I first need to tell you, you need to find a PhD program in verbal behavior. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> you posed a hell of a question and you stumped us for a couple of days, and we've been working hard on trying to get you an answer, that's for sure. Yep. So I think the important thing is just to go over stimulus stimulus pairing. Right. So you got stimuli, and you're going <laughs> to make them go through a history and pair them. Right? So I, the way I first talk, thought about your question was similar to exactly what Brad just said, which is we're going to take, um, maybe Brad's teaching me to talk, right? So he's a stimulus. So we're going to pair another stimulus with him. Do you have another stimulus handy? Oh, look, okay. stimulus. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> we have one. Yeah. Hey. All right. Reinforcing huh. nonetheless. Yeah, I, I, yeah, ironically. So um, so I think what we could do, if I understand your question correctly, or we understand it, that we could take Brad and pair him with that stimulus, right? I'm so, the only one that has this phone. Right. So then when the presence of that phone, I might be more likely to talk too, right, without Brad. So Brad could give that phone to somebody else, and I might talk in the presence of that person. I think that's what you're getting out of that piece. To my understanding. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's both a very pointed and very broad question at the same time. I'm not trying to pick on you, but there's such a really big, stimulus, stimulus pairing is huge. Um, so we do know that you're going after the verbal behavior piece. So that's the way we went with it. Was yeah. How do you pair that particular thing? So that makes me go to the bottom of your question, the fourth part. What are the limitations to stimulus, stimulus pairing? Not a whole lot as far as stimuli can be paired with each other. That's just a right. matter of finding the right set of a stimuli, B, the reinforcer, if you will. Right. And and then also, uh, not trying to go like secondary or tertiary or whatever, coordinary level conditioning. So we're not going to pair something else with this. I would keep it very simple and just focus on, if we're if we're getting your gist of your question right, then I would focus on just pairing one stimulus with the person doing the training, like Brad. Um, and then that, that child might be, or that person or whatever, might be more likely to vocalize in the presence of that stimulus. So give it to the parent, right? That's the idea. Yeah, sweet. So we want to tackle any of these other ones? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> off, off to the second part. Woo! Stimulus, stimulus pairing to increase spontaneous vocalizations. How does it, the production of spontaneous... How does it relate to the production? How does it relate to the production? It's not really the production as much as the increase in frequencies of the of vocalization. Right, in the presence of that it, stimulus. Yes, yeah, so pack. the behavior has to happen. You can't really just have a stimuli create a vocalization you can only reinforce it right so through stimulus stimulus pairing you can take said phone or me the kid might or hopefully will increase in vocalizations totally agree uh, I, the idea being you can get the frequencies within a training session or within a clinic setting that you can get stimulus stimulus pairing to ramp up that frequency so high for those vocalizations that they'll generalize out and become spontaneous in another setting no, it looks spontaneous, but it's really went through a generalization training procedure or a maintenance procedure, even at the, at the first level. So yeah, but I mean, you have to understand what our logic went from: Does the organism, does the person have this core skill? Can they vocalize? Right. So can they deliver to, an echoic? Right. Can they deliver? An, is it in their damn repertoire? Because if so, then 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 you can start to shape the occurrence of it or uh, when it's going to happen, so on and so forth. So that was yeah. How is it related to vocal imitations? Again, vocal imitation is a special skill, right? So why not just teach that special skill in one context and generalize it to a new context? Yeah, stimulus, stimulus, stimulus pairings. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully uh, that helps. Yeah, and I think we've over we might have oversimplified your question. So if that's the case, please tell us, and we'll do our best to get another response out to you. So, but thank you for participating and yeah. playing along. Because, and all the shares. Yes, all the shares. Yeah, tons of them. So we encourage anyone else to yeah. do the same. Yeah, Anybody? we're here to help and try to digest this stuff. Yep. So. Exactly. Cool. Thank you, Chastity. See you guys. All right. Oh. Wow. That actually worked out pretty good. Yeah.